Well, good morning. So glad that you guys have joined me today. I am here all by myself on such a beautiful morning. Uh, this would be an awesome time for us as the church to be together. Um, I want to begin uh, our service this morning uh, with just the scripture, just the reading. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the, to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and they took hold of his feet and they worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. And then continuing on in verse 16, now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the ends of the age. The Resurrection reading from Matthew 28. Let's pray together. Father, I do thank you for this glorious day when we can come together and celebrate the resurrection. We can celebrate salvation. We can celebrate the power of God that has been shown and demonstrated to all for all to see and lord we gather in this place and and we pray that as as believers all over this this community and this state and this world are waking up to the to the reality that that the the lord has been has been raised from the dead that lord many hearts will come to know you that many who are seeking hope and seeking assurance will find you on this day. Lord, I just pray your blessings on us this morning as we spend just a brief time uh, here um, celebrating who you are and celebrating the resurrection. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm so glad that so many of you have, have joined me this morning. Uh, as I said, we are in, um, in our church cemetery, which is a, a, a place where we often think of uh, not of life but the a place very similar to this was a place where the resurrection the news of the resurrection uh, was learned and this is where the angel told the women that, that Jesus was no longer here uh, so we're here today and as I said in, in kind of my tour while we were waiting uh, together uh, we are kind of out in the middle of nowhere and so we're hoping that the signal continues to hold strong we are at the back gate of McIntyre Air National Guard, and we're hoping the F-16s don't come screaming over our heads at any moment. But uh, if they do, and we and anything happens, uh, we'll just go from there. Good morning. My name is Cameron DeBrew. I'm the pastor of Beulah Baptist Church, and it is my honor to be with you this morning. Uh, I would guess that in the 214 year history of this church uh, just let me put some perspective on that 
uh, Thomas Jefferson was president when this church was founded. Uh, I would guess that this is the only this this one of the few times, if not the only time, that the body of believers at Beulah Baptist Church has not been able to meet together for an Easter worship service. Today we are living in unusual times. I must admit that this is not the way that I thought that we would celebrate Easter. Our hearts long to be together, to celebrate, and to worship together. It's in our DNA as believers to come together. Yet this year our churches will be empty. I'm guessing that you are not wearing your new Easter suit or your new Easter dress. There will be no large family gatherings for lunch, no community egg hunts, no family photos. Yes, this year all of those things are missing, but the most important fact still remains. The tomb is empty. He is risen. And when you really get down to the point of Easter, that's really the only thing that matters. This year we are forced to see that the glory of Easter has not been taken away or quarantined. This year we are forced again finally to focus on the risen Savior. God is good. Jesus is alive. Easter has not been canceled. Focusing on Jesus instead of these external traditions gives us the glorious realization that God is who he says he is. The scripture is true, and Satan is a liar. We are able to see more clearly this year more than ever that the prophecies foretold of the coming Messiah are true. He did come, just as scripture said, as a baby in a manger born of a virgin. He did come to fulfill the law of God perfectly so that we could be made righteous in the sight of God. He did die the death that we all deserve to die, all while being the sin bearer for the world and for you and for me. He who knew no sin became sin so that we might be called righteous. He died a cruel death in our place and he was placed in a guarded tomb. We can be certain that all of that is true. A holy God sacrificed his only son so that you and I would have an avenue to him. Jesus humbled himself and carried the cross out of love for us and out of complete obedience to his Father. Now this seems like a good place for the story to end. Only scripture has much more to say about this coming Messiah. Scripture foretold of the virgin birth and the reason for his coming. It foretold of the betrayal and the trials and the crucifixion. Scripture foretold of his death. But the story in Scripture continues. Yes, Scripture foretells Jesus' death, but it also foretells his resurrection, his ascension, and his second coming. The story of Scripture is still going on. The resurrection and ascension of Jesus not only gives us as believers assurance of salvation, but it also proves that he will come again. His word can be trusted. Satan has been defeated. Hope is here, and we have nothing to fear. Jesus is alive, and we can eagerly await his coming again when he will finally and completely rule and reign over the whole earth. Let me close with this scripture from Philippians 2, uh, verse 5 through 11. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God, was highly ex God hi has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every other name, 
so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. May this Easter remind us of the reason we celebrate. May the bitterness of our inconveniences remind us of the sweetness of our salvation. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we are just in awe of who you are. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made uh, through Jesus for us to have the opportunity to know you. Lord, it is, it is hard for us to wrap our mind around how we can even call ourselves righteous. <laughs> and Lord, we, could, we cannot do that apart from the blood of Jesus. We cannot do that apart from the resurrection of the Savior. And so, Father, we celebrate that today, and we celebrate who you are. Bless us on this beautiful Easter morning. May, may all that we do today honor your name and glorify your name. Meet us right where we are, Lord, wherever we are, and remind us of your love for us. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. You know, one of the things that I miss about being together is I miss seeing your faces, but I miss hearing you sing. Uh, so far, we've tried to do some singing together uh, on, on our live streams, but the only person I can hear singing is me, and sometimes Ken, and that's not always a good thing. Uh, Ken is not here this morning, uh, and uh, so I'm going to just ask you to sing this little chorus with me as we close today. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all sin is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth a living just because he lives.